When you think about Niagara Falls there behind me, you're usually thinking about the waterfall, the power station, the Maid of the Mist boats, that kind of thing. But there's also some pretty amazing bridge history in this gorge. The very first bridge over the Niagara Gorge was built by John Roblin in 1855. You might remember from an earlier video, John Roblin was the guy who pioneered the technique of parallel strand spun cables. His technique is used in every major suspension bridge in the world. And he built a bridge right here in 1855. The bridge he built is long gone, but the foundations are still here. Here's the old foundation for the tower of the suspension bridge. The towers would have gone up to about there with cables going out that direction and this way. The anchorage for the cables would have been back here. You can see what looks like an early approach foundation over there. Now this bridge only stood here in the canyon from 1855 to 1897, which means that it played a very key role in an important part of American history. Slavery was still being practiced in the southern states when this bridge was built, and the Underground Railroad was active all through this period. The ultimate destination, of course, being Canada. And unless you were taking a boat across Lake Erie, this bridge would have been the most logical place to smuggle people across the border. Here's the plaque at the bridge site. Go ahead and pause to read. It's a pretty reasonable assumption that Harriet Tubman herself helped to smuggle people across this bridge. This span was way ahead of its time, jumping almost 900 feet across the canyon and featuring double decks. The top level was for trains, the bottom was for pedestrians, horses, and wagons. Now, as amazing as this bridge was, it was not without its flaws. For one thing, it was mostly made of wood, which decayed pretty quickly in the high moisture content air around the falls. They later upgraded the stone towers to steel towers, which improved its strength, but ultimately trains just got heavier and heavier and soon exceed the capacity for this bridge. It was dismantled in 1897. By then, the more rigid design of a steel arch had replaced earlier suspension bridges for railroads. The replacement bridge behind me was finished in 1897. This bridge is still in use today for both trains and vehicles. There was even a second railroad span bridge right next to it, although this railroad-only bridge was decommissioned in 1925. Today, this spot is still a major port of entry between Canada and the U.S. All this amazing civil engineering history is just right here on the side of the road and pretty easy to see. But a fair bit of warning, because this is a U.S. custom site, make sure to get permission before taking photos and video. 